Um, so let me do a little bit of lecture now. Close phase one. Close the VM. Close, well, not close. You can minimize the VM, minimize IDA. We take a look at, yeah, we got time. Let me go over phase two and then you can work on it after you get back from lunch. So, for loops, we were basically seeing some of this in the phase one where we're seeing the, the incrementing and the looping starting off with your, for the stir land, starting off with the, the um, stir land value of zero. So for a for loop, you get your, your three expressions, initialization just uh, happens once um, before, you know, outside of the loop, before the loop starts. Um, you get your, uh, your test condition um, and you have your um, counter, which doesn't have to be a counter. It can actually be any kind of um, instruction, but for your, your basic for loop, it's going to be a counter. Um, all of the parts are optional. You can just have a for with nothing, semicolon, nothing, semicolon, nothing, close paren in, in C syntax, which essentially makes it just a, a do loop. Or a while, while true, basically. Yeah. Um, let's see. Classic for loop. So initialization. Um, with the stirlin, we were seeing it was moving zero into a into a local variable. This is that local variable syntax EVP, which is your your base pointer for the stack plus. And uh, Ida was nice enough to say, "Oh, this is a, a local variable, so I'm going to call it var underscore something." Uh, and your your test expression it can be a compare. Oh my, don't want to do that. It can be a compare. It can be a test. We were seeing that, um, and then your uh, a conditional jump here, and your counter. Like I said, this is very standard variable into register, add register back into variable. So that's how you notice the for loop. One of the things that can help is actually writing it out as you're taking a look at the code, going, okay, this is my initialization var. Four is my initialization, so I do four var four equals one, um, and then identify the the test condition. Okay, well var four is, you know, maybe it's greater than or equal to, or maybe it's the, the reverse of that. I'll just write in, you know, while var four is greater than or equal to six. Um, actually, writing it out can can help with visualizing it, um, reading through the code. Let's see array access. Uh, yeah. So if you have a array, um, no, nope. somebody raise their hand. No. Okay. Thought I saw. Um, you can have array access. So uh, a common form of this is going to be this base plus count plus count times increment, where you have your, um, like some kind of register, and then plus your your offset into the array, which will be your count, times um, no, increment. Wait, I think I have that backwards. Count is the um, number of bytes. Uh, of that object within the array. So if it's a int array, that's going to be four. Um, if it's just a car array, it'll be one uh, or just not, not there. Um, if it's uh, some kind of array of structures, it'll be the you know, number of bytes in the structure. Um, and then that increment will be the actual offset into the array. Um, pointer arithmetic, yay. Everybody loves it. Um, the other way that you might see it is this, um, where it takes that uh, um, that that base and actually moves it into a register and then um, adds to it for your count times increment, rather than actually doing the full referencing 
like that syntax. Uh, oh yeah, multiple variable argument functions. We, we kind of went over this with the, the printf. Just be aware that there are functions that can take variable arguments um, and be aware of that. If you come across a library call that you're not familiar with, um, Google it. Another good reference is uh, c++.com. Um, a lot of times your Google, let me show you. Um, and your Google is going to come up with the, first, uh, the very first one on there, c++.com. It, it's a really good reference. So just, just something to be aware of. Um, if it's a, I should say, if it's a, a standard C++ thing, if it's um, a library call to some Windows function, you'll end up being brought to the MSDN library. Honestly, I found Google for uh, Windows API calls. Uh, just good enough, plug it in there, and it'll uh, give you a link to the MSDN documentation. All right, let's see. Okay, so those are your basics. If you want to start working on Phase two, feel free.